Hi everyone, I'm Miss Leslie and welcome to Sculptured Painting. Today we're going to be decorating these little canisters that you got with your art supplies. So the supplies you'll need are the canister that your votive candle holders came in, tape, Mod Podge, a rough brush and a smooth brush, and you should have a pile of colored tissue paper. You can choose what colors you want and tear them into little shreds. We are going to be doing a different type of sculptured painting today. It's basically the same technique. We're going to be using the tape to make our shapes, but then instead of painting when we're done, we're going to use our colored tissue paper to cover up the tape, and that will be our color. So we're not using any paint for this project. So the first step actually is gonna to be to get this stuff out of the way. And I am gonna start working on this canister. Now there should be one end that pops off. Um, maybe you have one where both ends pop off, but choose what you want to be your top side and what you want to be your bottom side. Um, but I would leave the lid on and just remember not to put any tape over top of it so that you can still remove it and then use this canister for things like storing pens and pencils and art supplies. So we are gonna do a little flower and vine situation today. I'm gonna to start with a pretty long piece of tape rolled sticky side out. And I'm gonna use this to start my vine. Now this is the bottom for me. Um, and I'm actually gonna overlap a little bit onto this brown part here. And I'm gonna start by just making a nice long curvy vine. Maybe it'll be a vine, maybe it'll be a flower stem. We'll see. And that's about as long as I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear my tape off there and use this to start another line. So I made that a little too long. So we're just gonna work our way around putting a couple of stems or vines on. And then we will get into adding some leaves. So this is just the same process that we always do. Roll your tape sticky side out. Okay, and that's a little long, so I just ripped it in half. Put another vine here. Vine or stem. I'm gonna take this extra piece and use it to make this stem a little bit thicker. And as I go along, I wanna make sure that I'm pushing this down nice and firmly into the background, because I want it to be very, very secure on there. Once I have some basic vine shapes or stem shapes on here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some leaves. I'll show you what that looks like. You wanna start with a smaller piece of tape, nothing too big. Roll it sticky side out. And then I like to kind of just fold it into something that looks like it could be a leaf, right? And I'm gonna stick it over here, coming off of this vine. And once I have it stuck down, then I can kind of shape it into a leaf shape. And remember that leaves come in all kinds of different shapes. Some of them are round, some are pointy, some are shaped like teardrops. So there's really no wrong shape for your leaf. Unless you put it on there and you're like, well, that doesn't look like a leaf. And then you can always just take it off and start over. So we're doing leaves on our stems.
once I have, I have five stems on here, stems or vines, depending on how you look at it. So I just want to go through and make sure that everything is stuck down really nicely. Make sure I like my leaf shapes. You just take a minute to sculpt everything into the shape that you want it to be for your flower stems or your vines, depending on what you want to do. This vine is a little skinny, but that's okay. I think I'm going to add another leaf down here. Just to sort of fill in that spot there. There. All right. So now we got stems, we got leaves. It's time to put some flowers on here. So if you recall before we had made some roses type flowers that we can do here as well. Um, I'm gonna start with one of my taller vines. It's either this one or this one for me. I think I'll do this one first. Um, so I'm gonna start with a long piece of tape roll it up and now for a rose type flower we start in the middle of the flower so I want to go a little bit higher a little bit above where my stem ends because if my middle of my flower is going to be up here that gives room for the rest of the flower to fill in that space so I'm going to start in where I want the middle of my flower to be and just press my tape down in a lumpy spiral just a lumpy little wrap around there. And I'm gonna repeat that until it reaches the stem. So as you're doing this, as you're making your flowers, you can think about what colors you want them to be. I'm gonna do my flowers all different colors because in your squares of um, colored tissue paper that you have, you only have like one small square of each color. So we don't want to make anything too big that's going to require it to be one color because we don't have a lot of any one color. We only have a little bit of each color. But we'll get back to that. Okay, I'm adding some more layers here to this flower. letting it be uneven because most of the time when we see things in nature they're not perfectly symmetrical when we're looking at them okay so there I have one rose that looks pretty good but I might add a little leaf here coming out from underneath the rose so I'll do that leaf a little bit more three-dimensional than the other ones. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really like that there, but we'll leave it for now. Now I'm going to move on to my other flowers. You just want to make sure you give yourself enough room like this flower because it's so close to this one is going to be a lot smaller even though it's on a taller stem i'm going to start in the middle of the flower and just wrap that guy around there wrap it right up it is okay if there's some gaps, like if you can see the black background in your, um, in between your tape rolls, that's okay. We're gonna cover that all up with covered colored tissue paper eventually. Okay, 
so there's that little flower. Nice. I'm just going to keep working my way around, adding flowers to these three remaining stems. All right, so now I have five flowers on five different stems that go all the way around my little canister. I'm just going through to make sure I'm happy with the shape of everything and that everything is sticking nice and firmly to the background. That's pretty good. I'm happy enough with it. Now, on to the fun part. We're gonna use colored tissue paper to fill in on top of all of this tape. So I have already um, tore up a little pile of color tissue paper. I'm gonna start with green uh, for my stems. I actually had three different colors of green. There's like a light, a medium, and a dark. So I'm just gonna use a combination of these three colors on all my stems so they'll all be a little bit different from each other, which I like. But I'm going to push these green things off the screen here just so that I have room for my Mod Podge and then I don't get them stuck to the tape where I don't want them. So get out your little bottle of Mod Podge. My lid is glued shut. There we go. And I'm going to use my palette here for the Mod Podge instead of just squeezing it directly onto the um, artwork. You also want to have a glass of water handy and a towel for drying and uh, rinsing and drying your brush because when we work with colored tissue paper, sometimes the color can bleed um, into the Mod Podge. So by the end of doing these stems, I expect this Mod Podge to be totally green. So I'm going to start with one of my stems and I'm just gonna take a little piece of green tissue paper and then using my stiff brush, mush it down in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and like cover my whole stem with overlapping shades of green or you can do it all one color if you want. Just wanna make sure you mush it down in there really good. Cover over the leaves. Now, previously, when we have worked with white tissue paper to cover up our um, sculptured part, we did a lot of overlapping where we would have extra tissue paper going on to the background. We don't want that as much with this. A little bit is fine, um, but we don't want like a whole bunch of green bleeding over here because then it won't you won't be able to see that that's your stem. So we're gonna do our best to just cover the parts that are sticky. And I am gonna do this, I'm gonna do all of my green around all my stems, and then I'm gonna do all of my flowers, and then I'm gonna use the Mod Podge, okay? So this first step is just putting your color onto 
your artwork. All right, I have all my green done. Now I'm gonna move on to my flowers. I am going to need some extra scraps of green for when we add the Mod Podge, so don't throw away any leftovers that you have. So I have done a couple of little piles of color here, and each pile is two colors. All right, so this is two different colors of orange, which I happen to have in my stack of colors which you may have orange and yellow, you may have red and orange. You can really do any color combination you want. Um, but for a natural look, if you choose two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, such as blue and purple or red and orange or orange and yellow, that's gonna make a really nice um, effect for your flowers. So I have my red and orange, I'm sorry, my, my orange and orange, my red and dark red, and then I've got two shades of purple. I have five flowers and three piles of color, so we'll see how this works out. But I'm gonna start with orange. And I'm gonna do orange on this guy. So same thing, we're taking multiple colors and layering them, and we're just covering up the sticky parts of the tape. I did a little dark orange, now I'm gonna do a little light orange. And it's okay for this to overlap and for there to be gaps, um, and not gaps, for the colors to be on top of each other. That's gonna make a really cool look when we add the Mod Podge and the colors meld together. It's going to be gorgeous. But I wanna be very careful to make sure all of the tape is covered. And I wanna start, a good way to make sure you're getting all the way around the edges is to start around the edges by just laying your tape there, pushing it down. If you don't have long fingernails, you know, use your brush. But I just find, I find myself just using my hands a lot. Um, I don't need my brush as much because I have fingernails, but not everybody does. So you do what you need to do. It's also okay for this tissue paper to be folded up. Does not have to lay flat on top of your design. In fact, the lumpier the better. It's one of my favorite things about this style of artwork is that it is so textured. It's the opposite of smooth. And when I look at, the, at art that I like, I like to see texture and I really, really wanna be able to touch it, which, you know, a lot of museums frown upon that, but when you're making your own stuff, you can touch it as much as you want. See how that's coming together with the different colors there overlapping on each other? I really am liking this so far. It's also important to like what you're making in art. If you don't like something, it doesn't mean it's bad, but don't give up on it if you don't like it right away, because you might just find that if you keep working, you can turn it into something that you really love. Okay, so I've got that flower. I'm just gonna repeat this process with all my other flowers. But you can speed this up.
All right, you can go back to regular speed. Okay, so now we have our five flowers. Orange, purple, red, orange, purple is the pattern we ended up with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start Mod Podging these. Now, I do not wanna use this rough brush. Um, the tips are too frayed to get uh, as close to the edges as I wanna get. So I'm gonna use one of the regular small paint brushes that you have, one of the smooth bristled ones. And we're gonna do all of the stems first, as I said, because they're all green and that color is all gonna to bleed together. So I wanna be able to rinse my brush out between colors. So I'll start with this big orange flower again. So a little bit of Mod Podge. And you're just gonna paint right on top of it don't worry about the sides yet. You just wanna cover everywhere that's green and then right down 
along the edge there, right beside it. And I see a couple of gaps here, so as I go, I am gonna add more tissue paper to fill those gaps in. Not you, orange tissue paper, you don't belong there. I'm just gonna add this little piece of green here. Poke it down with my fingers and my brush and then add some more Mod Podge on top of this. So this part of the Mod Podging, which will be our final part because we're not going to be painting on this after we're done, is gonna take a little bit more time than our other sculptured painting projects where we just kind of slapped on as much Mod Podge as we wanted, spread it around all over the entire canvas or anything that we were working on. Because we don't want this whole black area in the background to be covered with Mod Podge, just have to be a little, take a little more time and be a little bit more careful to make sure you're only putting Mod Podge where you want it to go and you don't want it to go everywhere. I just want to make sure that's fully covered and that there's no little pieces of tissue paper sticking up. And I do have some more gaps here that I want to fill in where I can see white tape. I'm just going to layer another piece of tissue paper on top of it. Glue it down. So even though you're working in small amounts at a time, you still want to make sure you get full coverage. So take your time to do it, you know, kind of slowly and meticulously. Meticulous means very careful so that you don't miss any spots. And then down here, I have a little bit of tape sticking out. So I'm just gonna put in one more bleh, piece of tissue paper to cover that up my fingers to push it down and then add another layer of Mod Podge on top of it. Same with the leaf over here. Needs a little bit more. A little bit more. And this is pretty, pretty tiny pieces I'm using here. I realize my hands probably look huge in this video, but these are very, very small pieces I'm adding because I don't want it to overlap. Okay, so there I've got one stem done and you can see how the Mod Podge on my brush has turned green and that's why we're gonna do all the green first. So moving on to the next one.
All right, I have all my stems done. It's looking pretty good. I don't see any gaps. Oh, yes I do, there's one right there. So I was just checking to make sure that everything was covered and I found a spot that wasn't. I could see some tape, so I'm gonna go in and check all my vines before moving on to the flowers because I want to rinse the green out of my brush and never see it again. Also, <laughs> if you happen to get any Mod Podge on your hands while you're handling this tissue paper or if your hands are wet, you get green fingertips, which I don't recommend. I'm sure it'll wash off just fine, but maybe want to wear an apron to protect your clothing just in case. All right. Don't see any gaps in the green. I'm going to set that upright to dry while I rinse my brush. Get all of the green and all of the Mod Podge out. And then I want to make sure that I dry it thoroughly Dry it very, very well, because as we've said before, tissue paper is delicate and getting it wet makes it even more delicate. So because I have two orange flowers and two purple flowers and one red flower, I'm gonna do the orange ones first, then the purple, and then the red. So I'm doing, you know, I'm doing them by color. And I am gonna add some fresh Mod Podge to my palette, if it cooperates. There we go. Because I really don't want green to mix in with my orange. Okay, so we'll start with, these flowers are a little bit easier because there's more surface area and you can really just start by smearing on the Mod Podge, making sure every little piece is glued down. Start in the middle of your flower and then work your way to the edge. And it's also gonna be easier if you see any gaps where there's tape showing to just slap another piece of your colored tissue paper on there without worrying about it overlapping because it's so skinny. So I'm gonna add a little piece right here on the edge. Go over it with some more Mod Podge. Get some around the edges here. And as you are overlapping um, and adding these additional little pieces of colored tissue paper, it's gonna add to your stained glass effect that you have from your overlapping colors. A little bit here, little tiny piece. Poke it down, make sure it's in full contact with the material underneath it, and then add another layer. And you notice while I'm doing this, I'm turning it in all different directions. That's so I can make sure that I'm not missing any spots. Like I just noticed here, there's a hole here, which I didn't see at first because it's covered in, colored, filled in with orange colored Mod Podge, but it's not actually tissue paper. So I wanna make sure that I cover that hole, don't necessarily want it there. So I put another piece of tissue paper, a little bit more Mod Podge or glue. And then we will just repeat this for all of our flowers. So there's one.
All right, there you have it. Our beautiful colored tissue paper, sculptured, painted canister that you made. Once it's dry, you can put all kinds of stuff in there, like scraps of tissue paper. I feel like we've done that before. All right, have a great day, everybody. See you soon.